Hey everybody, I'm back. And before we get started in this video, I want to let everyone know that this is going to be my last video for a little bit. I'm going to be taking a break and I will explain uh, later on in the video. But first of all, some real cool stuff that I think you're going to be interested in. We're going to talk about the confirmed SOC for the Nintendo Switch has finally been confirmed as a Tegra X1 processor, basically the exact same chip. Actually, it is the same chip. The die has been x-ray scanned by techinsights.com. They have the die image, which was x-rayed and scanned and everything. And it, it is exactly the same chip as the Tegra X1 processor that is powering the Nvidia Shield TV. And you'll see it here in the picture. You'll see the scan from the Tegra X1 in the color there, and the brown one is the Nintendo Switch SoC. It is exactly the same configuration, same chip, everything's exactly the same. There's no customizations on it at all. It is running the T210 CPU, and the GPU is the GM20B, which is exactly the same core processors for the GPU and CPU of the Tegra X1 processor in the NVIDIA Shield TV. The only differences between the Nintendo Switch and the Nvidia Shield TV, the RAM, which is 4GB for the Switch and 3GB for the Nvidia Shield TV, and of course the internal storage was 32GB and 16GB for the 199 version of the Nvidia Shield TV. And the Nintendo Switch does have its clock speeds that are variable, so there is something there that allows the Switch clock speeds to be turned down and turned up, whether it's in dock mode or in portable mode. Where the big difference will lie with the Switch is going to be the APIs, obviously. The APIs are going to allow for developers to make games more coded to the metal. And we're already seeing that with Fast RMX. That game looks really, really good, better than anything that the NVIDIA Shield TV has ever produced. So, obviously, even though this is the same chip, the games are going to look a lot better programmed for use on the Switch directly. And not just the ports that were made for the Android-based NVIDIA Shield TV that didn't take full advantage of the Tegra X1 processor. So basically this goes directly against what NVIDIA had said, that this is a custom chip. Maybe it, you can call it a custom chip if you, know, you count the variable clock speeds, but other than that, it's exactly the same chip by NVIDIA. And as far as what they said about the 500 man years are concerned with this chip, uh, no, obviously. This is the same exact chip, guys, as the NVIDIA Shield TV. There is really nothing different here about it. So that was all PR speak, basically. So I really don't know what happened here with this chip. Obviously, it's been transferred over to the Nintendo Switch. Maybe something in the development of this system over the past couple years. I don't know what happened there, but it's obvious something happened during the process of making this system. Because if you look at it this way, you could actually make this system in less than a year like and just put it all together really quick and that's exactly what it looked like with no customizations on this chip there is no reason why they couldn't make this system in six to eight months and quite honestly maybe that's what happened because we started hearing reports about this system back in july of 2016 it's basically been the same reports over and over and over again it's based on a tegra x1 maxwell based so i don't know what happened here but this is obviously not the guts of the system that Nintendo was working on back in 2013 when they announced that they were working on a successor to the Wii U and they were also talking about using multiple devices and families in a system, brothers in a the system, they all said those things. We all know the quotes and everything from Iwata. This is obviously not that. This is something that happened really quickly within the last year. It's really obvious. I don't think Nintendo has ever used a stock chip. So basically this is Nvidia's stock Tegra X1 that they just plopped in there and did a little bit with the clock frequencies and call it a day. That is probably the quickest, easiest way to make a console. Obviously, you have to do a lot on the API side to make things run on the system in the way you want as a console. But this tells me that Nintendo had almost next to no influence on the design of this chip because it's already been made in 2015 by NVIDIA and they're just repurposing it for the Nintendo Switch. Now for a portable device, this is totally fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. For a portable, this is great. It's the most powerful portable there is right now. But let's be real, you know, this is not a home console, nor does it replace a home console. This is not a dedicated home console at all. It's a portable that can connect to your TV, and this is evident now more than ever that they're using the stock chip from NVIDIA. So yes, while the dock does make the system act like a home console, 
in my opinion, this doesn't replace a home console at all. It doesn't replace dedicated home consoles. It's not powerful enough to replace a dedicated home console because it's not going to get the same games as PS4, Xbox One, or PC. Those are home consoles, dedicated home consoles in the market today. So, I fully expect in the not too distant future that we will be getting a dedicated home console from Nintendo separate from the Nintendo Switch. You guys can believe what you want about the Switch and think this is all Nintendo is working on, but hey, there is no way Nintendo can only be working on this device that they had absolutely no input on even the chip design. So personally, I fully expect a dedicated home console in the future from Nintendo completely marketed separately from the Nintendo Switch. So with that being said, let's move away from this and get to more positive information that I have to share. And that is rumors about E3 and I'm very excited about E3 for Nintendo and the future of Nintendo, of course. I'm extremely excited about that. And I wasn't planning on actually even covering anything about this uh, NVIDIA Tiger X1 information, but of course it popped up today, so I'm including it in this video. But the main point of this video was for me to say that I'm very, very excited about Nintendo's future. I think they have an amazing future ahead of them. And I've heard some rumors about E3 that I'm going to share before I leave and uh, I'm really excited about it. Now, you guys have heard that Metroid Prime 4 has been, of course, hinted at from Retro Studios on their Twitter account. They showed some pictures of food, you know, and with Prime Rib there and everything, and we've heard some other rumors of people saying Metroid Prime was gonna be shown at E3. Now, I'm gonna reiterate that, that I have heard the same thing recently, that Metroid Prime 4 will, in fact, be shown at E3. So personally, I'm really excited for E3 already because I will in fact be attending E3 again for the second year in a row. And if you recall, I did a video at the end of 2016 for my 2017 predictions that Nintendo will have a big surprise in 2017. Well, I'm going to reiterate that now again that I have heard that Nintendo is working on a big surprise that's going to catch everyone off guard, quite possibly to be shown at E3. So I'm even more excited about that as well because we know how Nintendo likes to surprise people. Anyway, <laughs> I'm very, very excited for E3 2017. So anyways, guys, getting back to what I was talking about before about this being my last video for a little bit, I'm going to take a break from YouTube. and uh, But don't worry, I'm going to be back. I put a lot of work and effort into this channel and growing it over the past couple years. And when I do come back, it will hopefully be on more positive terms, of course. And um, as you know, I've been extremely critical of Nintendo lately, and personally, I don't like that either about where it's going on my channel. I don't like it. I want to be more positive. I would like to be more positive. Now, since I am so excited about what's coming up for Nintendo, I do expect that when I do come back, it will be on different terms, and hopefully myself and you, Nintendo fan, <laughs> we will be on the same terms finally. We can both be rooting for the same thing, and supporting each other and supporting Nintendo. Right now, for Nintendo and the Switch, quite honestly, for every one good story of information that comes out for the Switch, there's like five bad stories that come out. So for me and who I am, I really can't ignore those things, and it definitely doesn't make for you know very positive content on my channel, <laughs> since I'm a Nintendo-focused channel and all I get is bad information. And uh, quite honestly, this information today wasn't good news either. A stock chip. Hey, you know, so I don't want to talk about it anymore, honestly. I want to take a break from that. I want to come back on a positive note. I do want to support Nintendo 100%, but the problem is I'm not going to lie and make up stuff. You see, that's the problem I'm having right now. But when I really started focusing on, on Nintendo, I was really in a defense mode. Like, I was really wanting to get people supporting Nintendo and to get people buying the Wii U and, you know, really showing people how great the Wii U was at the time, which I really did believe and still do. I think it's a great console. But I was really in this to support Nintendo and to get people supporting them. But you guys have to remember, I come from a time where Nintendo was the best, you know, and the current state with Nintendo fans seem to be in the mode where they accept third best basically not even second best but nintendo fans are willing to accept third best for whatever reason i am not willing to accept that i refuse to accept third best in fact it is the stupidest thing to expect from a company that's trying to be number one right the company that you love so much i love so much for some reason fans seem to accept that they're willing to not have the best from nintendo quite honestly guys I don't think this is Nintendo's best effort. It really isn't. There is all kinds of issues here that I'm not going to even talk about anymore. I'm tired of talking about it. But 
I would like an effort from Nintendo that shows us, shows me, that they are trying the best that they can. I don't see that here with this system. I really don't. I wish I did. But like I said, there is some really cool things on the horizon with Nintendo that I'm really excited about. And it's going to be a time where hopefully all of us will be back on the same page together. As Nintendo fans, being able to support this company, united. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but you know that's basically where we're going here with this. Right now, I can't really do that honestly. Now, of course, every YouTube content creator would like to grow their channel and get more subscribers and everything like that. But for me, I would rather be honest with you guys instead of pretending like nothing's wrong or pretending like I don't have a problem with what's going on. So basically I need like a month or two off from YouTube and the channel's not going anywhere. I'm gonna come back and everything should be fine by then. So hopefully you guys welcome me back when I do come back and then we can build on something more positive going into the future with Nintendo and this channel. And I do enjoy interacting with you guys and I had a great time so far and I'm going to continue that of course when I come back. But I do wanna of course say thank you to each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart, you know, 3.6 million views on this channel. I really appreciate all the comments and all, this, all the nice things you said. A lot of you guys have commended me on being honest and forthright with my opinions on Nintendo, even if it may hurt, you know, a lot of people's feelings. You know, I do appreciate that, I, and I know that things will be better in the future. You guys gotta trust me on that. And this channel will definitely continue. I definitely will be back. But I do wanna bring out that even though I won't be making videos, I still will be active in the comment sections of other people's videos. And I will be posting things on Twitter here and there. I just won't be making videos right now for the reasons I just mentioned, obviously. So it's not like I'm disappearing completely or anything. And I may appear in a podcast here or there as well. So we shall see. So to get caught up on all the latest news with Nintendo and everything and everything going on, I do, I do suggest you watch Player Essence you know OJ and Spawn Waves channel and uh, you know guys like that in the community that are you know keeping that going for you guys so definitely keep up to date with all that what's going on but I will be back somewhere around E3 hopefully before that time so keep that in mind that that will be the time range when I do return so for now guys enjoy the launch games on the Nintendo Switch with Zelda and next month with Mario Kart 8 and then in May I believe Street Fighter 2 is coming out and then we have E3 so you have some games to play and some things to enjoy and, but for now, I'm going to say goodbye, and I will see you guys very soon in a few months in the next video. Take care.